that thing. Geometry and measurement. From preschool to high school, traditional instruction in the United States is a wasteland here. The uh, uh, University of Wisconsin researchers found that first graders are more likely to count the sides and the angles of polygons to differentiate one from the other than third graders were. We actually teach it out of them, okay? And it appears on all these kind of tests. So what do kids know, and why do they suffer like that? Well, they, they know a lot. We gave this test to kids. You might think, why did you give them such a test with, like, paper and pencil tests with numerals all over it to really young kids? And the reason is, Mike Batista and I had given this same instrument to uh, 1,500 kids from 6 to 12 years of age. And we wanted to see how kids 4, 5, and 6 would compare, okay? And they did pretty well. Um, they did 92, 96, and 99% for fours, fives, and sixes on, on that. They did 82, 86, and 91% on squares, even with some real distractors in there, right? Triangles are a little lower, about 60%, and rectangles a little lower again, uh, but still about 50% correct on, on rectangles. So what did we do? We found that kids knew quite a bit when they entered school just about simple shapes like this. This is Mike Batista in my research out here. Can you imagine if you were a principal of a school and you had to show this graph to parents and said, look at what we taught your kids this year. <laughs> That's like the flattest graph you could find. And this is just low-level naming of shapes. It's a little better for triangles, but not much better. How come? Because this is what kids see in school. My son brought this home. Okay. Hey, one good thing about it, the triangle doesn't have a horizontal base up at the top. Okay, so that's different, right? But you know how the publisher puts a dotted line around it so that not only do you, can you read the instructions down here, but they provide you a model? Look at what they chose as their best example of a triangle. It's got a hook, right? <laughs> Mathematics, number and shape are important constituents of mathematics, but at its fundamental base. Mathematics is about precision of reasoning and thinking. Precision of reasoning and thinking. This is slop, okay? Uh, let's take a look at some others. Uh, sailboat. He got credit for the sailboat, and he might have been looking at those two triangular sa sails, but he circled a pentagon, right? And he got full credit. And what's this sandwich doing here, all right? <laughs> nah, we don't need that kind of stuff. <laughs> But my favorite is this one, okay? My favorite is this one because I remember it well. It's, it's burned into my memory. I was presenting, and if you think, okay, he's not a very good presenter now, but I was worse before, okay? This was my first time out, and I was presenting my dissertation, and I turned my back to the audience, and I have like 500 numbers on the screen saying, Lincoln, you can see from my research, you know, and stuff like that. And next door was a, pers a guy who was also talking about early childhood math, but he was doing math and music. And there was a partition, you know, folding partition between the two rooms that wouldn't close. I know, because I grabbed that thing and tried to close it. It would not close, because his, his speakers were right on the other side of the opening, so the music's wafting in, and everybody's laughing and singing next door, and I'm here, and now you can see from my research. And every time I turned around, five more people were gone from the back. They went next door with the other guy. So you know when a presentation's gone wrong, you start sweating and, and everything, you know, you're, you're all nervous and everything. And, and, then, and then at the end, Jackie turns over to, to, to the person next to her and says, why do we have to sit in the front? We can't even leave now. You know, it was miserable, miserable. Finally, it's over. I go next door and say, be big about it. Go next door and, and find out what they're doing. So you should do more of that stuff. You know, you're just not motivating. Nobody wanted to hear what you had to say. So I'm next door, and I got the song sheets. Now, I don't know the tune to these, because I was trying to present. I was sweating at the time. And, um, uh, but take a look. Take a look at the kind of math and music they were doing. Let's look at the last verse here. What's a triangle with sides of three? A piece of pie for you and me. N no, it isn't. Oh, maybe they get better. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's a triangle with sides of three? A piece of pie for you and me. A musical triangle. Ding, ding, ding. Hmm. Let's call the triangle... What's, what's wrong with a musical triangle? It's a mathematical model of a triangle. It doesn't even meet, right? And what else? 
It's, it's not, it it's actually doesn't have a corner, a vertex, right? The vertex is two straight lines that come to a point, but they're all curved. I know we call it a triangle, but it's not a good example. Well, I'm sure they get the last one. What's a triangle with sides of three? A piece of pie for you and me. A musical triangle, ding, ding, ding. A slice of pizza with everything. Oh my God, that's a section of a circle. They got three out of three wrong. This kind of stuff breaks the Hippocratic Oath. Kids would be better off if they didn't come to school the day they did this kind of song. That's no way to integrate math and music. Get rid of that too, all right? We got to move beyond naming basic shapes to getting kids thinking with precision about shapes and their property, making mental images, just transforming shapes, playing with shapes, investigating shapes, composing and decomposing shapes. So one thing we do in the Building Blocks Project, for instance, is to present you know, kids with a wider variety of shapes. Those of you that know the pattern blocks will recognize the pattern block shapes are here. We make them bigger, but they're here. But so are tangram shapes. So are long, thin rectangles, pentagons that look like this, but also pentagons that look like that. So the kids have a wide variety of shapes to talk about and to sort and play with. And they do. They explore. They make pictures. They make designs. They play games with them. Okay. So we do a lot of that. We build shapes from parts, from straws, from toothpicks. On the computer, we build them from parts and everything else. We do a lot of that kind of stuff. So my research lesson here is include geometry and spatial thinking in a fundamental way. It's critical. It provides meaningful and motivating areas for number, for logic, eventually for later calculus. There's a little to lose and a much to gain by fostering that kind of development early.